Next, Attorney General John Ashcroft, he talks about cooperation between the Justice Department and the telecommunications industry in anti-terrorism efforts. He spoke today at the U.S. Telecom Association's annual conference in Washington. His remarks are 20 minutes. When President Bush called on John Ashcroft to be the leading law enforcement officer of this nation, he called him a man of great integrity, a man of great judgment, and a man who knows the law. After September 11th, he gave him a phone call, had him come over to the White House, and he said, it's your job to make sure that Al-Qaeda does not attack again. John Ashcroft was a member of the Senate Telecommunications Committee. He worked hard on our issues. He understands our industry. But he also knows our industry as perhaps the best partner in this country when it comes to law enforcement to intercepts, to wiretapping, and to gathering of intelligence. And so he's come this morning to honor our partnership with law enforcement, and we are so pleased and proud to have him here. I give you the Attorney General of the United States, John Ashcroft. Just please be seated. Thank you very much. I, uh, I need to thank you in a number of ways. Uh, there are ways that uh, you're familiar with. You know what you mean to America. You know that relationships are based on communication, that information is based on communication. You know that the best friend that a culture has in defending itself in a modern society is information. And that's so important to the business that you represent. When I was a member of the Senate, I always enjoyed working with the USTA on important telecommunications issues and now as Attorney General of the United States and it is a great privilege to serve you I might add I look forward to working with you in our war against terrorism protecting Americans from the terrorist threat requires that we find ways to share information so that we're not ignorant on subjects that are critical to our survival share information to make ourselves and each other more informed about the threats we face, to fill in the gaps in information, gaps that each of us have. In his State of the Union message, President Bush outlined in stark detail the ongoing threat our nation faces from terrorist organizations and from their supporters. Enemies around the globe, fanatics who deplore America's belief in freedom and equality for all people, they pose, those enemies pose a threat to our safety and the security of the United States of America, our communities, our families, and the security of our way of life. One of the more unsettling revelations of President Bush's speech was that our troops in Afghanistan uncovered documents in an Al-Qaeda safe house that describe additional potential targets of terrorism. Among the bits of information found by our troops were diagrams of nuclear power plants and public water facilities, detailed instructions for making chemical weapons, and surveillance maps of American cities, and detailed descriptions of landmarks, both here at home and abroad. <clears throat> by attacking such targets, our enemies mean to cripple our nation's critical infrastructure. Since the attacks of September the 11th, the men and women of the United States military, our intelligence officials, our law enforcement communities have worked tirelessly to develop the most comprehensive picture possible of the terrorist threat we face. And through the murky picture that emerges, uh, one fact is more clear than any other. Al-Qaeda and its membership did not intend their vicious attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon as the end of their mission. These attacks marked the beginning of an ongoing, coordinated conspiracy designed to undermine the freedoms we value, the values we respect, to undermine the place of the United States as the leader of the free world.
since September the 11th, uh, through dozens of warnings to law enforcement, deliberate, a deliberate campaign of terrorist disruption, tighter security around potential targets, a preventative campaign of arrest and detention of those who have broken the law, America has grown stronger and safer. We've grown stronger and safer in the face of terrorism. Now, much progress has been made, but much more needs to be done. An issue paramount to the concern of the Justice Department is the safety of our nation's critical infrastructure. Such infrastructure obviously includes telecommunications. As you all know, our critical infrastructure refers to both the physical and cyber-based resources that make up the backbone of our nation's telecommunications, edge energy, transportation, water, emergency services, banking, finance, and other information systems. Attacks on these critical systems could come both against physical resources or physical and cyber resources. And while the form of these two attacks could not be more different, the goal that we have is the same in each, and that is to disrupt uh, those attacks. Of course, their goal is to defile and destroy American lives. As the attacks on the World Trade Center demonstrated, a well-planned physical attack could permanently destroy essential facilities in a matter of minutes. The failure of communication technology resulting from those attacks, a breakdown that left emergency response services unable to communicate with each other, demonstrates the importance of protecting our critical infrastructure. If given the opportunity, the extremists would cripple America's telecommunications. We must deny them that opportunity. Those of us here today know that the key to preventing critical infrastructure attacks, such as attacks on our telecommunications services, and responding effectively if they do occur, the key to getting that done is a, the availability of information, acquiring information about vulnerabilities, becoming, as Will Rogers might say, less ignorant about the threats we face. That's what will better equip us to fix deficiencies before attackers can exploit those deficiencies. Facilitating this sharing of information is our primary goal. If we make, uh, if we make remediation of terrorist attacks after they occur our goal, we've already lost. You'll notice that there's been a, sh a shift in the paradigm of the Justice Department from a prosecutorial effort to a preventional effort. When the criminal seeks to extinguish himself in the commission of the crime, prosecution is a rather empty objective. And when individuals perpetrate crimes that have such massive consequences, prevention becomes the only clear priority. So prevention is the name of the game. Information is the best friend of prevention. But information can be both an asset and a liability, the same information that can help government and private industry work together to protect our critical infrastructure can help the terrorist attack our critical infrastructure. Government and the private sector must work together to communicate securely potential risks and possible solutions. 
The safety of our nation is our first and overriding objective, and we must recognize that the nation can be protected only if the private sector feels free to share information with the government. Without an exception for information needed to protect our infrastructure, even responsible civic-minded companies and individuals may hesitate before sharing crucial information for fear of competitors obtaining that information and using it to their advantage. So that some of the requirements that government disclose information have, have been an inhibitor of sharing. You wouldn't want to provide information to the government that compromised your ability to compete effectively with those of your competitors. With this in mind, both the Senate and House of Representatives are currently considering bills that would create an exception to the disclosure of uh, disclosures that are required under the Freedom of Information Act for information that is voluntarily submitted by a corporation to government agencies for the purpose of helping protect our critical infrastructure. The National Infrastructure Protection Center at the FBI, for example, has established an InfraGuard program, a cooperative effort between all levels of government, business associations, academic institutions, and other participants dedicated to increasing the security of our nation's critical infrastructure. The center itself, established in 1998, serves as the government's nerve center for threat assessment, warning, investigation, and response. It is a sign of the seriousness with which, with which this administration views the protection of our critical infrastructure. That the president's budget for 2003 includes $21 million to expand the FBI's ability to respond to computer threats and identify and arrest those engaged in criminal computer intrusions. The Department of Justice is also utilizing new tools passed by the Congress in the USA Patriot Act to protect our infrastructure. Prior to the passage of the Patriot Act, law enforcement needed permission from a court in each and every jurisdiction to track the senders and receivers of terrorist phone or internet communications. Now law enforcement uh, individuals are are utilizing orders with vastly expanded reach, allowing us to monitor terrorist communications that travel through multiple jurisdictions. This increased efficiency, these are not new kinds of information, this is simply not having to go to court every time someone moves from one area code to another or one jurisdiction to another. This increased efficiency saves vital time, time necessary to stop our enemies before they strike. In addition, on October 16th of last year, President Bush created the President's Critical Infrastructure Protection Board, the mandate of which is to coordinate federal efforts related to protection of our information systems. Deputy Attorney General Larry Thompson serves as the Justice Department's representative on this board. Finally, telecommunication companies can provide invaluable assistance not only to federal law enforcement agencies, but also to our local law enforcement partners. As we work toward a more cooperative spirit, we need to fully implement the Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act. Those working against us in our war against terrorism are using new technologies that defeat the ability of law enforcement to intercept communications. In order to prevent terrorism, law enforcement, state, local, and federal, must have the ability to intercept 
communications between these terrorists, their terrorist leaders, and soldiers. Whether, whether, whether it was those first heroes on Flight 93 who decided that a fourth plane crashing into vital infrastructure would be one plane too many and who sacrificed them see themselves in crashing the plane in a field in Pennsylvania instead of landing the plane on Pennsylvania Avenue or at a location in Washington, D.C. Whether, whether, whether it was those first heroes on Flight 93 who decided that a fourth plane crashing into vital infrastructure would be one plane too many and who sacrificed them see themselves in crashing the plane in a field in Pennsylvania instead of landing the plane on Pennsylvania Avenue or at a location in Washington, D.C. Or whether it's the heroes of flight number 63 who confronted and subdued Richard Reed, who is charged with attempting to blow up that plane with explosives hidden in his shoes. Americans have found a new sense of unity and purpose and willingness to stand with resolution in the face of terror. Only together will we face down this threat, vanquish this evil, and live on to enjoy the blessings of liberty. You are a major part of helping all Americans get this job done and getting it done well. And I pray God's blessing upon you and upon the United States of America. Thank you very much.